So this is a Hyundai Ionic Electric and I'm going to look at the alloy wheels on these vehicles. Sorry for interrupting but I thought I'll just explain a couple of features on YouTube which will help you when watching long videos. Firstly under settings you can adjust the playback speed and secondly at the bottom of the screen you've got chapters where you can jump to relevant sections of the video. And while I've got you please remember to add your comments or questions below the video and also subscribe. Okay, look, enjoy the video. So on the Ion X38 kilowatt hour, you've got diamond cut alloy wheels. If you don't know what that means, it's basically the flat surface of the wheel here isn't painted. It's just um, bare aluminium and then you've got lacquer over the top to protect it. So the inner edges of the wheel here is painted a dark silver or gray. You've got plastic inserts here on the spokes to improve aerodynamics on this car but the flat edge of the wheel has been machine cut to take away the paint so you've just got the aluminium exposed from the uh, obviously aluminium wheels and then it's painted with a lacquer to protect them but as you can see they start corroding and they never last very long diamond cut alloys have a relatively short life they start looking tatty after a while and I much favour just uh, painting them um, with uh, silver paint and uh, not having the exposed aluminium. But anyway, this car is now just coming up to three years old. It's done 38 or 39,000 miles. And as you can see, the wheels are looking pretty tatty already. So this wheel is the front near side and on vehicles this is the wheel that normally gets the most damage because it gets clipped with curbs when you're parking and that's the case on this wheel there's been some damage here and i can feel the surface is rough so the lack has been broken water's got in and the corrosion has started and again there there's a bit of damage there being clipped on a curb not by me i would add this was all before i bought the car and it gets the water in and then the corrosion starts and once it starts you can't stop it However, here there is no damage and already, as you can see, that is corroding as it is here. And again, there's no damage. There there is, it got caught there, so that's worse. That's worse there because it got caught, but here there's no damage. And as you can see, the corrosion has started. But if this was painted, you wouldn't see any of that. You wouldn't get that. It's where you have this diamond coat lacquer. It just doesn't last very long. If I look on this wheel, this is the rear near side. Again, these normally get more damage where people park against curbs. This one looks significantly better, but on every spoke there is damage, well, corrosion. Apart from those two spokes, there's just a little bit on every single one. And this isn't caused by curbing. That there is, that there is. But the rest hasn't been hit, yet it's still corroding and looking tatty and this side is the offside rear again it looks pretty much the same as the other side it has been hit there but the rest yeah the rest is just corrosion under the lacquer and then the front offside this is the worst one actually um, it's pretty bad lacquer's peeled off there lacquer's broken there that's been hit there and there's a chunk out of the alloy there but yeah it's all looking pretty untidy so I'm going to get this car ready for resale because I'm going to be selling this car soon so I'm going to take these alloys off take the tires and the valves out and take all these plastic inserts out and then I'm going to take the wheels over to platinum alloys in Swindon and they're going to refurbish them. So if this was a car I was going to keep for my own use for a long time, I wouldn't continue with the diamond cut. I would just get them all painted in uh, probably a lighter silver than that and just lacquered and then just have them all as a solid colour with the contrasting black inserts. But because I'm going to sell this car, I'm going to have to keep it original. People like the cars being original. so. Um, I'm going to get them to do it exactly the same as the factory finish. I'm a little unsure whether to get the wheels done now or a little bit later because I'm not quite ready to put this up for resale yet. But I've got a period now for the next two weeks where I don't really need 
to use this car much so it's just convenient for me to get it done now but you know what's going to happen I'm going to have it done they're going to be pristine and I'm going to go and clip a wheel myself but anyway I'm going to have to take that chance because it's just uh, convenient for me to um, lose the wheels for a week because it takes about the, about a week there uh, they're always busy uh, they've got so much work over there they do a fantastic job and that's what I'm going to show you on this video I'm going to whip the wheels off now get them all ready tomorrow I'm going to take them to Swindon and then in a week's time I'll show you what they look like when they come back one thing I've noticed though is the wheels are starting to corrode on the inside which is quite normal actually because um, alloy wheels when they come from the factory they're not painted and lacquered the same on the inside as they are on the outside it's sort of an unfinished finish on the inside and they always corrode on the inside edges first however this one is corroding quite badly around the valve stem particularly for a three-year-old car it's not very good normally it will do that at a much later age and if this gets really bad it can start causing an air leak and the same way if it corrodes on the inner edge and the bead isn't sitting properly you can have air escaping there so for a three-year-old car, that's not very good. So if you're looking at a Ionic or any Hyundai probably, just have a look at the wheels because that's something you need to know. And if it's corroding badly, then you do need to get them refurbished. However, where I'm taking these, they do a fantastic job and these wheels will come back better than they were from the factory. And all these inner surfaces are painted and lacquered the same as the outside surface and um, they tend to uh, last much longer and are much better protected. So this will all get sorted, it will all get shot blasted and all sorted and that valve will be seated and sealed properly and it will last much longer than the three years it has lasted from the uh, original factory finish. So I'm just stripping the wheels down here and this is your TPMS sensor. It's a bit dark in this, you probably can't see it but anyway they're held in with what's that a 12 millimeter so you undo that that's going to drop on the floor because I'm trying to do all this one-handed holding the camera but anyway that's the tire pressure monitoring sensor this bit here has a coin battery in there same as you have in a um, your key fob or computer motherboard but it's sealed for life they last about five years or so so when that battery is failed you have to change the whole sensor which isn't a good idea but anyway i guess they do that so it's waterproof so you've got a 12 volt um sorry a three volt lithium battery there and then this is what's measuring the tire pressure and sending the signal out which the car then reads And then if I flip this wheel over, I've got to take those plastic inserts out, these, and normally they're just clipped in when you have inserts on other wheels, but in this case they're all held in with Phillips screws, two on each. So that's going to be quite a bit of work. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So 10 spokes per wheel, two screws per spoke. So that's 20, 40, that's 80 screws in total I've got to take out now. So there's the plastic insert and that's what it looks like. So it does make you wonder why they've bothered with these. It's not an aero thing at all, is it? It's just a stylish thing because that isn't adding any benefit whatsoever. That's just for style. And actually, this is the thing I don't like about the 38 kilowatt hour wheels. Um, I don't like these bits. It would have been nicer with plain spokes. But anyway, I can't do anything about that. Got to keep these. Can't not have them because you end up with these ugly holes there. So that's all of the plastic inserts out. So next... I'm just going to strip the weights off this. Hope I pointed the camera in the right direction, wouldn't it? 
Not that I really need to strip the weights off this. They will do all that, but while I'm preparing a wheel, I might as well get as much of it done as I can. So that's the stick-on weights on the inside off. And there was just a little weight on the outside rim. So next I've just got to knock the um, centre cap out. This one is the worst wheel. This is the one with the corrosion around the valve stem there. But if it didn't have that, what I've probably said to them is just to sort out the diamond cut and maybe not go to the effort of respraying it again. Because they could have just filled this, put this on the lathe, cut the surface and then just re lacquered it and it would have saved doing a complete restoration. And it would have saved then repainting all of these spokes and everything. But because this is bubbling on the inside edge, it's got to be a full restore refurbishment, as it were. Which is a shame, because um, obviously they're not that old. But anyway, that's the worst one. That's what it looked like before. So, oh, there's one plastic insert I missed there. So that's what it looked like before. So I'll show you what it looks like after in a week's time. Actually, let's just show you the inside edge as well, because as I said, the inside edges are never finished to the same standard as the outside when they're new. So none of this is painted. This is all bare aluminium. These inside edges are painted, but um, I guess they're not lacquered. I'm not sure. It's not the same finish as the inside. It's just a more of an undercoat, as it were. Um, and that's why they corrode from the inside and the brake dust sticks. Not that you get much brake dust on these because it's on an electric vehicle, of course. But, um, yeah, that's how they are originally. So, again, we can compare it in a week's time when these have been refurbished. So, one week on, I'm back over to Platinum Alloys in Swindon to pick up the wheels. So, I've got the wheels here. And uh, also got some overfinch wheels I've had refurbished as well. And uh, some spare tyres there. So I've got to get all of this stacked in the van without them scratching each other. And the Ionic wheels here, don't they look good? So that's it. Hopefully they're all protected by the cardboard. And I can get my way. So, let's have a look at the wheels, now they've been refurbished. Well, as you can see, they look like new. If you look at the valve stem down there, that's all looking good with no corrosion. Um, and all the marks, of course, have gone because they've been remachined, obviously painted, and uh, when the diamond cut's been done, it's all been lacquered. So yeah, they look like new. And then if I look at the others, again, if you look down that valve stem, no bubbling where the corrosion was. The same with that one. And then that one. So I cannot tell which one was the bad one. And one of them had a chunk out the side, which I think was this one. Yeah, I think it was there. Because as you can see, it is a little bit flat on that edge. To be honest, they normally fill it better than that. But anyway, that's good enough. By the time the tyre's on, you're not going to see that at all. So that's the one that had the big chunk out, I think. But the rest of it just looks fantastic. And, uh, you know, I said they are better than new. Well, look at the finish on the inside. The spokes are now all painted. This is all painted and lacquered. So brake dust doesn't stick so well. It's easier to um, put the weights on as well. And uh, they straighten them as well if there's any buckles, which there wasn't on these. But there was two buckles on the Range Rover wheels there. So I'm sure many are going to want to know what it cost to get a wheel refurbed. Um, I get a bit of a discount. I get trade pricing. Um, and also, of course, I strip the wheel first, take the tyres off, take the weights off, take the valves off, um, centre caps, in this case all of those spoke covers. So it makes it easier for them, so uh, that reduces the price as well. 
Um, when you're getting wheels refurbished, diamond cut does cost more, so they are more expensive. Uh, I'm not going to share exactly what I pay because I don't think that's fair to platinum alloys to share the trade pricing. But anyway, I suspect for diamond cut in this size with this finish, you're probably looking at um, 90, 95, £100 a wheel plus VAT, something like that. There are places that restore alloy wheels a little bit cheaper, not too much cheaper to be honest, but uh, there are vans that come out and do it. But what a lot of those places do, it, they don't do a complete strip and shot blast and acid bath and everything else that these guys do. They will often just um, put protection around here, leave the tire on and just repaint the um, front for surface and lacquer it. So yeah, it can look good, but it's not a complete strip down like this and doesn't come back in the same quality as this. So personally, I would prefer to spend another 10 or 15 pound a wheel and have a cracking job like this. So I've got a lot of work to do now, putting these back together, putting all of those spoke covers back on, the TPMS valves back in, and of course putting the tyres on and balancing them as well, and then putting them back on the car. So that's what it looks like now with the covers back in. However, I've really struggled to get these centre caps back in more than I've ever done before. So I think the lacquer is so much thicker than it was before and it's made this hole a bit smaller, a bit tight because I'm really struggling to get these down and I've even tried taking the wire off the back which is opening up those lugs that doesn't make any difference but that is really tight and obviously i've tried mallets and things so what i've done is cut a bit of timber and smacked it center on like that with a mallet and i thought they were going to break that took quite a few attempts to get that down i thought this plastic was going to crack but anyway it's in Right, I haven't had that before. These have been much tighter than any I've ever had before. So that's flush. You can see. It's a very tight fit. So when you put the TPMS valves back in, you just have to be careful. You don't do these too tight. They're a little bit delicate. So you just knit them up to four Newton meters with a torque wrench. So tyres are on, just going to balance these and because they're dark alloys I'm going to use black stick-on weights. So they're stick-on weights on the outside and inside there. And while the wheels have been off the car's had a surface complete with a full plate dismantle clean and lubrication and a reduction gear oil change. So I'm going to crack on, get these wheels back on and then we'll have a look outside to see what the car looks like. There, that's all done. So, what do you think of those? They do look an awful lot better. So, eagle-eyed viewers might notice that the spokes, well, the paint is a slightly different colour to the original. If you were just getting one done, then you would get them to colour match the paint to the original Hyundai paint, which is a fraction lighter than that. But they charge for that because it requires extra work. Because I was getting all four done, I just took one of their standard colours. And in this, I think they call it anthracite. They do a light, medium and dark. And I think that's the medium one. So when you're getting all four done, it's just better to take the uh, one of the standard colours um, because you're never going to know any different. And I think this is just slightly darker than the original, which is probably better because it doesn't make these plastic inserts stand out quite so much but there's not much in it so hopefully these will now last longer than the factory finish which has only lasted three years while this was on the ramp it had a service brake lubrication service as i said also had the air conditioning done not that it needed that but that will get checked and also that reduction gear oil change again not that it needed it but something we do before any vehicle goes out so this will be up for sale soon um 
I actually need to use it now next week. I've got to go to London twice. But uh, when I finish with it, the interior is going to get done and then it will go on the website. So if you're interested in a premium SE with immaculate wheels, I just hope I don't clip them next week. But anyway, um, join the mailing list and then when it's ready, all the details will go out there first before it's made public. And you can grab yourself a very nice Ionic that's also had the two recalls done as well that uh, coolant recall and the SOS recall so this one will all be good for another 10,000 miles so that's it for this video I thought while I was getting these wheels refurbished I'd share the information and it might help if you've got a Ionic that's got particularly tatty wheels uh, I would just add some people are getting the wheels done under warranty um, obviously if you've got a chance of that I would try that route first but if you've got any signs of damage on the wheel, if that lacquer has been nicked with a slight curbing, then it's not going to be a warranty job, which was the um, situation in my case. But um, if you can get it done under warranty, then obviously that's worth trying and you'll probably get a courtesy car as well. But anyway, that's it for this video. If you found it useful, please do click the thumbs up button. As always, really does help. Do subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos on the Hyundai Ionic. There's a link to a playlist in the video description below. Do comment and ask any questions and I'll see you on the next video.